Alright. He's ready. Ready. <laughs> Attack. Good evening. Welcome to the August 25th uh, Reading School Committee meeting. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome so many smiling and friendly faces this evening. Thank you for uh, taking time to join us this evening. Um, whew, we have a fairly packed agenda this evening. Uh, we are going to do one of our favorite times, which is introduce new teachers uh, and administrators. Uh, but what I think I'd like to do, just in case uh, other people's schedules don't allow, is I think we're going to start with public input, which is what we typically start with. Uh, is there public input this evening? Mrs. Doctor. 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 Yeah. And I had it written down. It's very appropriate um, that I'm doing public input today because I wanted to congratulate the school department and particularly all the teachers because the Boston um, Magazine actually came out uh, with their issue today ranking the Reading High School as 30th. It's a very exclusive list and I think uh, congratulations are in order and I wanted that to be on the public record. So very appropriate for teachers coming in. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Further public input. Ms. Lieberman. I had a question and a request. I was wondering whether there were, are going to be any planned changes to the math curriculum. Um, uh, in the past year, there had been a lot of concern about um, uh, students being unable to get to algebra in middle school and AP calculus in high school um, without having to double up or take a half credit summer geometry class, um, which would be fairly substantial obstacles for kids who might later discover later on that they want to do science, math, engineering. So I just wondered, and, and also the issue of whether we're going to get textbooks this year and whether they'll be mapped to the curriculum or whether we'll continue to have links, sort of. You weren't, you weren't looking at me that time, so I assume Oh, I'm sorry. I assume your questions were <laughs> oh. in that. I couldn't answer it, I don't think, appropriately. I but I maybe, Mr. Martin, if you, could, if you could take a, uh, a swag, that would help. Yeah. Um, well, certainly all, all students are scheduled for this year, so we're not anticipating any changes in sequence this year. I mean, we're continuing to review everything to see how it goes. Um, we are also going to be piloting some new resources um, in the middle school courses. So that would be in seventh, eighth grade, and even the algebra course. And so this summer, a lot of work was done on that. Um, the maps were updated for the middle level specifically to make sure that it's mapped to the new resources, including a book and online resources that we'll be using, online access to the materials that kids will be receiving in middle school. So I don't want to spend too much time on that this evening, but yeah, that's... Fair enough. Just a question. Now, is Atlas for all grades or just for middle school, not for high school? I mean, ultimately, our hope is that we'll be able to access all grade level content areas in there. Um, so, I mean, it takes a while to get this all rolled out. So right now we've been focusing on the middle level math classes because that was, you know, I, f I felt that was a good place to really start fleshing that out because there was a lot of focus on those courses. Um, but we hope this year to make a lot of progress in getting other courses up and available. Right now some of them are available to teachers, but we're starting to get more information so we can make it accessible to the public. Okay, would it be possible to schedule a math meeting either, I don't know if the school committee is maybe the, not the most appropriate venue, but um, we've been begging for more information about uh, maybe trying to find a way to add additional pathways for students who, who want to, to try and move up so that they're not tracked at the end of sixth grade um, to have a more difficult path if they want to go into. I, I think it's an excellent suggestion. It's not typically something that we're going to take up during a public meeting, but we can certainly work with uh, Mr. Martin and Dr. Doherty. To schedule something. Schedule. That would be awesome because excellent. then I won't have to keep asking questions. Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Yes, Mrs. Yeah. Webb, it's a nice I guess I would just like to say I would think that um, Mr. Martin would include in that meeting some of the material that's been presented already that does show multiple pathways, which do include an option to double up during junior year. So it does not require a summer. And I think that one of the goals with this, and those pathways show this, is to improve the percentage of students that actually 
get to calculus of some kind. And uh, I know that that information has been out there. I'm sure it's actually on Edline in one of the published presentations that's on Edline. So I would um, think that Mr. Martin would um, include that. And if something is set up, I'm quite sure that the committee <coughs> members would all end up um, receiving that notification so that the community can you know, once again hear from Mr. Martin and Dr. Darty if that's appropriate. But that's I just right. want well, my understanding is that that half semester pre-calculus um, elective that's taken concurrently with Algebra 2 does not lead to AP Calculus. It leads to intro to calculus, which is not. Is that not true? Again, it's, it's probably okay. a better. Okay, but uh, no, these are I more specific for. A yep, we, we can try to work. To, we will absolutely work that together. That would be to great because uh, there's okay. a lot of misconceptions, and, and uh, it would sure. be nice to get, make sure that students in the high school and middle school are getting some advising in terms of math. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coach. Um, so I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Doherty in a moment because this is the first time in my uh, stay on the committee that I actually get to introduce a new member. Oh. So this evening we welcome Mr. Gary Nine as our newest member of the school committee. Uh, Mr. Nine has been in Reading forever. Uh, uh, with their, with <laughs> close to how'd that work out? How that it's close. Uh, we're grateful to have you on the committee. We look forward to working together. Uh, Likewise, and welcome the opportunity. Excellent. Now, Dr. Okay. <laughs> um, before I turn it over to the elementary principals who will introduce their uh, their new teachers, I just want to say that we um, we are very proud of the hiring that we have. Uh, this have gone through the summer I would like to thank um, many people for the diligent effort that they've put in um, long hours and many interviews and reference checks and um, the in the uh, program last last week that uh, mr. Martin facilitated but um, mr. Gus Martinson who is filled in all summer as our interim HR administrator has done a great job um, during our transition um, to, a, to a new HR administrator. Um, Kristen Cohen, who is one of our administrative assistants in the, in the office, has also done um, <coughs> yeoman's work in processing all of the paperwork and making sure that, that, that everything is done, done in a timely manner. And I also want to thank our principals for all the time and effort that they've put in um, this summer. We have uh, several new teachers. The majority of them, the vast majority of them, went through um, the program last week. Um, which we are very proud of, the Educator Induction Institute. You can see it's five days of, of different types of activities, um, ranging from the nuts and bolts types of activities on how to understand the different things that you need to start the school year to some more fun cultural team building type activities, um, taking a tour of Reading, because uh, a lot of people don't know where all the different places are that they, they need to access as a new teacher. And um, hearing several presentations about special education and school safety, um, curriculum, um, things like that. So um, it was a great five days. I, I think they would say that. Um, and uh, they had a great time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over first to Heather Leonard, who is going to introduce the new Barrows teachers. Good evening, school committee. Good Thank evening. you for having us. I'm pleased to be here again this year. Um, and I have one new teacher joining the Reading community. This is Ed Edwina Mon Leahy. So, Winna was actually a Barrow student, so that's oh. extra special. <laughs> and also was a 2000, year 2000 graduate of RMHS. She attended East Carolina University in North Carolina and received her degree in special education. So she was just married this summer, so special congratulations to Winna. She lives in Stoneham with her husband and she loves snowboarding in her free time. Winna will be joining us in the fifth grade team as the co-teacher for the DLC special education program. So Great. I am honored to present Winna Mon Lake. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Joanne King is next from the Wood End Elementary School. And I have one teacher as well. Good fabulous. 
Danielle Giantasio, mm -hmm. who is, um, if we say it correctly, it's Giantasio. <laughs> Um, our half-day kindergarten teacher this year we added as you know a half-day kindergarten program to our school and Danielle actually worked as a full-time kindergarten para last year with Jackie Pepper so great tutelage um, went did her bachelor's at Curry College and her master's at Eastern Nazarene she's also been our lead teacher in the extended day program for the past couple of years so very familiar with the Wood End community and we are so excited to have her Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Karen Feeney and Joshua Eaton. So I'm going to up the ante by one. I have two teachers <laughs> to introduce to all of you tonight. So first we'll start with Heather Vigorito, who is our um, LLD teacher for grades four and five. And Heather is a graduate of UMass Amherst, where she got her uh, undergrad degree in psychology, correct me if I have so wrong, um, and then went on to Lesley University where she got her master's in moderate special needs. Heather taught at the Newton Public Schools as a special education teacher and most recently she was employed by the Department of Education in their MCAS department. Mm -hmm. um, so we welcome Heather to our special ed team. And also joining our special ed team as our learning center teacher for grades K to 2, we have Leanne Atkinson. And Leanne is a graduate of Assumption College where she got both her undergrad and master's degree from there. Um, her undergrad in elementary education and her master's in special education. And she is a graduate of Reading High School and Joshua Eaton Elementary <laughs> School, so we're bringing them back home to where they started. And prior to coming to Reading, she worked in Holden, Mass. as a special education teacher. So I welcome two teachers to our district. Thank you. Mr. Sprung. <laughs> From Birch Meadow. Mm -hmm. I invite my new staff to come forward. Um, <laughs> so we'll do th we'll do this alphabetically. <laughs> um, so we have Katie Anderson who is going to be teaching. Um, I'm sorry, second grade. <laughs> um, make sure I get all my, my places in the people in the right places. So uh, Katie got her degree from Springfield College with the major in psychology and has done coursework at Miramac College in the area of special education. Um, I was happy to steal her from my Thank friend, uh, <laughs> Kathy Jell. So, um, so she worked with Kathy last year in doing long-term substitute work. Uh, and so we were very happy to take her from kindergarten and bring her over to Birch Meadow full time. <laughs> Welcome to Katie. Um, Lorette Collin. So we're always happy to have Reading residents as part of our staff. So Lorette lives here in Reading and her children go to Birch Meadow. Um, and Lorette is going to be working in our learning center. And so Lorette graduated from Marist College in New York and did her graduate work at Simmons College. Uh, recently worked as a teacher in Cambridge Public Schools and is now coming over here to work in our learning center. So welcome to Lorette. And we have Talia Hallett, who is going to be teaching first grade. And Talia um, is coming to us from Simmons College. And Talia also has done some graduate work in the area of special education. So all of the staff that I hired this year um, have special education background, which is very exciting. And Talia was working as a first grade teacher in Newburyport. And we're excited to have her here now working in Reading as a teacher here. And um, it is a great honor to have Trisha Piacentini. Did I say it right? <laughs> Very good. So Trisha is going to be working in our DLC program in our sub-separate classroom. Um, and so Trisha comes to us. She got her degree from Fitchburg State and a master's degree from Lesley University and has been working in Amesbury where she started a program working with students on the spectrum and she really built that program from the ground up and so we're excited to have her expertise come to Reading. She's certainly learned a great deal about the wonderful strengths that we have as part of our program and she's also going to bring wonderful ideas from Amesbury to us so we're very fortunate to have her here as well. So, Excellent. Birch Meadows staff. <laughs> And last but certainly not least, Mrs. Giles, Kathy Giles. Hey, Team Jones. Come on up. Okay, so I have five new hires that I am very, very, very happy to introduce to you. Start with Carrie. 
Dr. Doherty, do you recognize Seventh Karen? grade science. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so Carrie attended the Killam Elementary School and came right through Reading Public Schools. Um, she is going to be our new SSP, our social um, student support program teacher. And Carrie uh, graduated from Leslie University. And what's really nice is that Carrie's been at Seam Collaborative for the past 13 years working with their students with moderate abilities and social emotional difficulties. So having Carrie um, coming into a public school setting with the out of district perspective is something that I'm really looking forward to having on our team and offer us a lot of new strategies. So welcome um, and yes. She was one of, one of my best students. science students. <laughs> That's what he told me. I checked references. <laughs> okay, Ellen Zreich is next. And Ellen um, is my new grade two, grade three learning center teacher. We have Ellen who graduated from UMass Lowell and Provident with her master's, Providence College for undergrad. Um, Ellen has been in Andover Public Schools since 2010, and in Andover she was a reading specialist, she was um, a classroom teacher for grade two and grade four, and a learning disability specialist. So she's highly qualified for this position, and we're so excited to have you aboard. So thank you. Side note, we were talking about being working moms <laughs> and how difficult it is, and the pep talk as long as everything just goes as planned, you're fine. The next day, what happened? My 16-month-year-old son broke his leg. Oh. <laughs> so he's in a cast up to here. Jeez. So get to leave induction early, yeah, right? Yeah, but um, I jinxed it's it. It's all going to go up from here. Yep, yeah. that's I, right. I do want some ice cream, though. I missed <laughs> out. <laughs> we'll take you. I'll take you. OK, next, Miss Kara Engelson. Kara also is a Reading Public School. Did you have Dr. Dory? No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Kara is also a Reading Public School graduate. Kara did her undergrad at Northeastern and University of Vermont, and you also did some studying in Italy, right? Mm -hmm. um, Kara has been at Killam for the past year, um, and so she's kind of homegrown. She's worked in <coughs> second grade and third grade as a special ed para, as a special ed teacher, mm -hmm. and now she is my new half-day kindergarten teacher. So I'm delighted to have her as a, a member of our staff officially, and welcome aboard. Um, Kim is next. This is Kim Adamo, and Kim is our new library media specialist. Kim did her undergrad at BC, which of course attracted me to her, because <laughs> yeah. you know, we share that, but we weren't there at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my I cat. She yeah. um, <laughs> and also her master's from Simmons College where she earned her library and information science. Kim has done all of her internship over in Linfield Public Schools with the media specialists over there and most recently she was in Somerville uh, Public Schools as uh, the media specialist uh, educational aide. What's really nice is that when we were asking Kim questions about what we were hoping for the vision of our <coughs> library media, she had experience in it, she knew it, or she said, I'll Google it and I'll find <laughs> out about it and I'll let you know tomorrow. So we knew she was for us. So we're so excited to have you aboard. And um, already she's meeting with the staff and doing some dynamic things with uh, our media program. So thank you. I'm not forgetting you, but yeah. apparently. Oh, you can go ahead. You're are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you can fight over me all you want. It's okay. <laughs> so this is Karen Hall, and the reason we're fighting over her is because she is our .5 ELL teacher for the district, but she's going to primarily be working with the elementary schools, and her office and classroom is stationed with us over at Killam. So what's very interesting about Karen, uh, other than, of course, you know, your teaching experience, she's lived in Thailand, she's lived in Australia, she's taught in Thailand, she's taught in Australia, she was a classroom teacher in Lexington Public Schools for the past few years, but her passion and her heart has really been working with students, um, learning second languages and supporting them. So we were so glad to scoop her up and she will be joining all of us 
with our ELL and she's coming in at a perfect time because she also has the new SEI certification for ELL and she's going to help us and support us so we can all service our students. So welcome aboard. Welcome. Thank you. And, um, principals and the teachers, Ms. De Sylvia would like to take a picture of all of you. Oh, there, for the paper. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We're going to have middle school come in next. If you uh, go this way, that'd probably be better. And then they can come in this way. Thank you. While we're making the transition, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that out of our new teachers this, this year, our new hires, eight of them have either been substitute teachers in our school district or paraeducators, which I do think speaks to the quality of um, both our substitute teacher program and also the strength of our paraeducators in our district. Welcome. Mr. Lyons? Sure. I know you have a lot. Uh, this, will be, this will be quick. <laughs> Good evening. Thank Good you evening. for thank you for having us. Um, we welcome three new faculty members to Parker Middle School this year. We welcome two teachers and one paraeducator. Our paraeducator comes to us from the Mary Lyon Elementary School in Brighton, Mass, which is a special education school, where she has worked for the last few years as a paraeducator. She is also working on her English certification. So we are excited to have her in our seventh grade learning center. We also welcome an eighth grade special education teacher. Her name is Caitlin Richardson Carter. And Caitlin is a graduate of Gordon College and also Boston University and just recently from Salem State College. She has worked for the last few years at the Dr. Franklin Perkins School in Lancaster. And so we're excited to welcome them to our special education staff at Parker. We also welcome Parker alum, Matt, <laughs> Matt Williams, who is the son of Dave Williams, you may remember. Um, Matt is a graduate of Curry College, and he also received his master's from AIC. And for the last nine years, has taught fifth grade in Melrose, and we really feel fortunate to have been able to hire Matt this year. So these are the three candidates that we welcome. We're very pleased to be able to have hired the candidates that we have hired. Um, we think that they will contribute very nicely to both the special education program and to our academic core programs. So that's it from us at Parker. So thanks. Thank you very much. Sarah Machat. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having us here tonight. And it's an honor for me to be here with five of our six new hires who I am just so excited about as I feel they're really going to bring many strengths to our school. Um, we have three of these hires who are returning. They were actually with us in long-term substitute capacities last year. Um, the first one is Paul Simpson. He was with us since last January through June and he was teaching seventh and eighth grade English language arts. And now he will be teaching sixth grade English language arts. Um, he brings with him, he's kind of done a career change and he has 20 years experience as a professional writer and editorial consultant. He's already worked on our school newspaper, mm -hmm. and he lives over in Wakefield with his wife and two children. So we're happy to have Paul, who is right here. Um, also returning is Jerry Coyne, who actually was a long-term substitute from October through June of last year in seventh and eighth grade science. And he will be returning on that same team in the same capacity. Um, he has a marine sciences degree with specific interest in fisheries, and he actually spends his summers tuna fishing. I don't know if I was allowed to share that, Jerry, but I think it's kind of cool. And he's really interested in aquaculture. Um, so the kids have really loved hearing his stories and been engaged in that way with him. Um, Jane White is not with us today, but she uh, last year was a long-term substitute and paraeducator and will now be, be a teacher in our eighth grade learning center. And brand new to Coolidge, we have three brand new teachers who I'm very excited to introduce you to. Marissa Holt is directly behind me. She's originally from Texas, and she has a bachelor's in exercise physiology from UMass Lowell and a master's in teaching from Northeastern. And she will be teaching sixth grade science and eighth grade robotics, actually, so kind of a neat mix. Um, she shared with me that she loves teaching so much. She often jokes with family and friends that teaching blurs the line that divides work and hobby, and I love this enthusiasm and hope she <laughs> continues it all year and still feels that way at the end of the year, which I think she will. Um, Lindsay Pinkham 
over on the end here, will be joining our staff in the position of school psychologist. She's originally from Central Maine and just earned her degree from Tufts University. Her specific interests within the field include behaviorally challenging students, stress reduction, and empowering girls through athletics. She's also helping to coach the field hockey team, so we're happy to have her in both places. And last but not least is Jennifer White, who is a recent graduate from Endicott College, where she majored in physical education and minored in exercise science and business. And she will be teaching wellness at Coolidge this year with Christian Heisinga, the co-teach. Um, she played college basketball at Endicott and fell in love with teaching when she was teaching children how to swim. So I'm very thrilled to have all of them with us this year. And also I would like to share the names of paraeducators we have. Um, four new paraeducators so far. We are looking for a couple more. Shannon Allen, Diane Barucci, Griffin Scarpedo, and Emily Wagner. We're very happy to have all them on new staff as well. So thanks for having us here tonight. Thank you. I think Mr. Sylvia wants to take your picture as well. Okay, so we'll pile out this. Yep. Open. You're more than welcome to. Look, I mean, we've got a name for you and everything, buddy. We'll let Dr. Doherty introduce you in a minute, okay? I'm learning something every day. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the school committee. Good evening. Do you want us to stand? Yeah, I want you to stand okay. and join us. <laughs> you guys are the guests of honor, not me. But you're going to sit. Yes. <laughs> Just check I'm it. just copying just uh, yeah, the last principle. Right. I just, I just yeah. do as I say. <laughs> Um, I'm excited to welcome the following educators to the Reading Memorial High School community. Uh, Susan Hooper. Hi. Susan will be joining the guidance department as a general education social worker. She earned her BA from Dartmouth College and her MSW at Simmons. She was previously an adjustment counselor in the Arlington Public School District and with On the Rise Incorporated as well as with the Castle School. Uh, Courtney Dermer will be joining the Special Education Department to co-teach History, Latin, and assist in the Learning Center. She earned her BA in History uh, in Secondary Ed at Fitchburg State and her Special Ed Certification from UMass Lowell. Courtney has worked at Coolidge Middle School and in North Andover, Thompson, and Sargent Elementary Schools. And then we have Catherine Frank. Catherine will be joining the Special Education Department and Learning Center and as a co-teacher in three courses, she earned her BA from University of Northern Iowa and her master's from Endicott College. Uh, she's been a teaching assistant at a middle school in Bedford for the past two years. And Ariane Sraubeck, did I say that correctly? Uh, I'm working on that one. <laughs> she will be joining the special education department as a school psychologist. Uh, she earned her BA from Gordon College and her master's from Yeshiva University. Previously, she has worked in the Newton Public School District as well as the Lincoln Medical and Mental Health Center and the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And lastly, but by no means least, Megan Clark. Uh, Megan will be joining the Special Education Department as a speech and language pathologist. She has her BA from Union College and her master's from the College of St. Rose. She has previously worked in the Springfield Public School District as well as at, a various, uh, at various speech language hearing clinics in New York. And unfortunately, there are several other teachers who could not make it tonight. Uh, Danielle Jones will be joining the math department. Allison Williams will also be joining the math department. Uh, Zach Brokenrope is joining us in the English and Language Arts department. Courtney Prey is joining us in the foreign language department. Uh, and Allison Fidner is joining us in the special education department. So we're excited to have everybody uh, this year it should be an exciting school year. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Dr. Doherty, how are you doing? Good. Good. I have uh, I, I have you? one yes. introduction, <laughs> and Mrs. Seibert has another introduction. So I would like to introduce you, Carolyn Wilson. I, I know you've met Carolyn before, but um, Carolyn has been very busy this summer as the director of student service. I mean that in a good way. She has met with a lot of people. She's talked to community members. She's talked to teachers. She's talked to administrators. She's talked to parents um, and is learning a lot about the Reading Public Schools um, in general, but also uh, student services. Um, 
Carolyn is um, currently uh, currently is the direct student services, but prior to this, she was the team chair in the Newburyport Public Schools. She has been an educational specialist for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, she is a graduate of St. Anselm College, earning a BA in psychology. She's also received a master's degree in special education from Simmons College, and she has a Juris Doctorate from Suffolk University Law School. So I look forward to um, having Ms. Wislin on board and uh, working with her this year. Uh, she did a great job today. I watched her give a, in some very <laughs> difficult conditions, um, gave a, present, a mandatory presentation today on uh, bullying, on Title II, on, <laughs> on Title VI. Um, the, what made it di difficult is that the air conditioning wasn't working and it was 150 teachers in the room. So wow. kind of made it some difficult, but she did a great job taking a very dry subject and making it interesting. Um, and Martha is going to introduce yeah. Kelly. I'm going to come over and yeah, stand we're good. Well, <laughs> well, well, the best for last. the best for last, that's what I think. So I'm very pleased to introduce our new director of facilities, Kelly Colon. And I have quite a little reading here. So Kelly started her career in real estate and, and business at the age of 16, working alongside her family members. She has a BS in facilities planning management from Wentworth Institute of technology and she has an MS in facilities management from Mass Maritime. She has over 24 years experience in real estate, facilities and property management. Most recently working as a facilities manager and planning facilities manager at uh, Novaris and Avia? Aveo. 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 Both bio, biotech companies. Um, her prior facilities experience includes work at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston and Dana Hall School in Wellesley. She's also an adjunct faculty member at Cambridge College, teaching operations management to undergraduate management uh, students. She's married with four children, ranging in age from, I, I corrected her this morning, but her one year old, her, her youngest is one, and she turned one on Saturday, because I was like, she's not one yet. <laughs> she turned one on Saturday. Ranging age from 17 to one years old. Uh, her husband is also in the facilities property management, so, I know that she has <laughs> wonderful conversations at dinner, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but we're very, very fortunate to have Kelly. She's done an outstanding job um, this summer getting all of our schools ready for kids, um, and we really look forward to many years with Kelly at the helm. So thank, thank you, you, Kelly. Welcome, thank you. Kelly. Welcome. Dr. Dory, is there anyone else that you might like to introduce before we get started? Oh, Carl's here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Carl, welcome. Uh, Carl is our new student rep. As you know, uh, Andrea Astri will be joining us again for a second year as senior. Carl is a junior. Um, Carl, I don't know if you want to say a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be a junior at Reading High. Uh, for sports, I play football, basketball, and baseball. Um, uh, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> if he brings that smile, we're all set. We're all set. Yeah. Right. Welcome, Paul. It's great to have you. Yeah. Okay, little breather, right? We're going to get right back into it. Uh, we'll take this opportunity to do okay. reports. Carl, you're, you're the new guy, but typically the way we have our school committees run is uh, in the beginning of the meeting, we'll have public input if anybody from the public wants to make a comment or ask a question, and then we'll do reports. We'll ask the students if they have a report. Uh, typically, that report is uh, happenings at the high school, happenings with athletic teams or with drama or with any co-curricular stuff, things that you're noticing in Reading. Anything that you want to bring to the table is fair game. Sound good? Um, I'm assuming this evening that you don't have a report. All right. But next time, required. Uh, any other school committee members this evening with reports? Mrs. Snow Doctor. I do. I'm liaison with the Human Relations Advisory Council. And we had a meeting within the last two weeks to follow up an incident that happened in town that actually was not reported to the police, but um, realizing that people need to be informed about what to do if they see hateful graffiti or a hate crime. Um, we're meeting, we're trying to figure out a protocol. For, so henceforth, when 
concerns come to us, we'll know exactly what we're going to do and the timing of which we're going to do it. Um, so that's the discussion underway right now. There is a letter to the editor being written. We had um, one of our members actually personally submitted one. Um, and we will be present having a booth at the street fair on September 7th, along with uh, RMHS a World of Difference group, um, which we're really excited about. We're going to have a couple of PSAs that have been created by the World of Difference group. And our meeting with the selectmen is on September 2nd, and it's an open meeting. So if anyone would like to come and has any ideas, we'd love to see you. Um, I also have another report, Please. if I could. Of course. I just wanted to say also that on Thursday, August 21st, we had a um, Metco pool party and barbecue. And we had somewhere around 80 people come, families from both Boston and Reading, who had fun meeting each other. Students met other children that were in their classes, played in the pool together. Um, thanks so much to Sharilla Lestrade for cooking at the grill and helping me clean up. And thanks also so much to the elementary principals, Eric Sprung, Joanne King, Karen Feeney and Kathy Giles for springing for the meat and paper goods so that the event was free. And um, another community member funded the lifeguard, which was awesome. And so I want to thank everybody for coming. It really makes it a fun event. And this year, for the first time, it was held from 4 to 7 in order to enable people who work to come afterwards and to enable the people who came from Boston to miss the traffic going back. So I'm eager to hear how that worked for everybody. So everybody out there, let me know, please, so we know for scheduling purposes next year. So thank you to all the administrators and all the teachers that made the supreme effort to get there on a weekday. And thanks to all the families that came to play. Thank you very much. Further reports this evening? Dr. Gordon? I have a few things. Um, this has been a very busy and productive summer in the Reading Public Schools. Um, I want to echo what, what Martha said earlier about um, the, uh, the amount of work that was done in our, in our facilities, in our schools this, this summer. Um, teachers came back today and buildings <coughs> were clean. Um, there was a lot of repairs that were done, minor repairs, but repairs that were done in a, in a, in a variety of areas in different schools. Um, some minor painting was done. We had some rug replacements in the different schools um, and, and some other things done. And, you know, there was a lot of transition that happened in late spring and early summer with our facilities department. And Kelly um, and Martha did a great job making sure that everything was planned on time uh, and, and moving forward. So. Um, that that went great. We also had a lot of technology replenishment and replacement going on this summer, and our network manager Luke Caputo and the technology staff did a great job making sure that um, all of the devices were delivered to the schools, that our wireless was up and running and ready to go for for the start of the school year. So, um, from a infrastructure perspective, um, the buildings were um, in great shape for uh, for the coming back of the. St students and the teachers. In terms of teaching and learning, um, and Craig can also allude to this, there was a lot of professional development going on this summer. Um, we had several of our teacher leaders participate in um, the uh, SRI Institute, um, School Reform Initiative Institute, which talks about using structured conversations and looking at student work uh, to improve student learning. It, it starts to begin to lay the foundation for um, the new structures that we're putting in for professional learning opportunities for our staff this, sum, uh, this, this year and for the next few years. Um, I did talk about it today in our, in our opening um, day uh, speech that, that I gave to, to all the staff about how we really need to do things differently. Um, that the way education has been done, not just in Reading, but um, across the country, um, public education is not going to survive in the way that we have currently been doing it. What we need to be doing is we need to be focusing more on teachers working together, administrators working together with teachers to be able to figure out the best way to help students succeed. 
And so part of that is developing structures and shifting the culture to make that happen. Um, it started happening last spring um, when we created um, these uh, teacher leader positions, which are teachers that receive a small stipend to lead their grade level or their department area and in K through eight um, in working with, with other teachers um, in the different curriculum areas. And it continued on this summer when these teachers got the, the training that I mentioned earlier. And then it's going to continue this year um, when all of our teachers will be participating in in-service days, meetings after school, full day in service, um, professional development opportunities. So we're very excited that this shift is starting to happen um, and, and it needs to happen. It needs to happen so we can, so we can um, do what's best for our, for our students. So a lot of that was happening this summer. We also had um, several committees doing work. We had a school safety committee that was working at the district level, um, making sure that we continued to stay with our best practices. I, I presented to you in July the report from the governor, um, and we spent some time this summer taking a look at that report to make sure that we were aligned with the best practices that were out there. Um, we also had several areas doing curriculum work. The high school departments were doing a lot of different work. Uh, real world problem solving met this summer to create the new problems for the, for the, um, junior. For the junior real world problem solving. Um, so there was a significant amount of teacher and administrator collaboration going on um, this summer. I don't know if you want to add any more to that. Or did I cover everything? <laughs> No, I mean, I think also the Writing Institute. Yeah, I forgot about the Writing Institute, right. Again this year, which has, um, we had 25 or 30 teachers involved yep. in that as, as well. So, yeah, it, it's been a very busy summer. I think sometimes people think that everybody goes on break, but the kids leave and the teachers, in many cases, go to work um, to get prepared for the new school year. So there's a lot of exciting stuff happening this summer. Thank you. Uh, if I might ask two questions that if you're not able to respond to the tonight, that's great. Uh, that's okay. Uh, the work that's being done on the back of the high school, I guess that would be the old math wing, uh, the columns, the cement column supports are, are having work done. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know when that work is scheduled to be completed, how that's progressing? Yeah, we, we ran into a couple of delays, um, but I think now we're going to be back on track with that. Um, we've already been coordinating it so it will not interfere with school um, so we done outside of school hours um, you know unfortunately the the rise playground will not be accessible this week and we're hoping that this will all get um, addressed um, before um, rise really uh, it has a brief come and meet your teachers on Thursday right. but otherwise it doesn't start until Tuesday okay do we think the work will be completed by then we, we hope so it, it, okay. there was a delay that, that okay. we're getting addressed yeah just so everyone is aware those structures um, are more for aesthetic purposes. Those are not sure. for any other reason. Um, but still, we have to make sure that, you know, we maintain a very safe environment in that area. My only other question was, and only because I drive by this way to get here, uh, the playground work that was being done at Birch Meadow, looks like they were doing some substantial work on that side structured. Is that is that school work? Is that that's town work? It's recreation. Okay. Well, it's PTO and right. recreation. Right. Yeah. Do we have any idea whether or not that work has completed before school starts? Do we know? I believe it's supposed to be. Yeah, I think I it. You can't tell as you drive by. The majority of it is done. I think the yellow tape is still around it, sure. I believe. And I think that's just more to keep the kids off of it until school starts. Yeah. Perfect. Those are my two questions. And the only other follow up would be, uh, and this is for the, the committee, but. Um, I thought Dr. Doherty did a fantastic job this morning welcoming all uh, teachers and staff back. It was really well attended. Uh, there was a ton of energy in the room. Um, I thought Dr. Doherty, your presentation was excellent. Gone, gone were the bullet point lists and stuff, and it was filled with multimedia and pictures and music, and I think people really enjoyed it. So well done this morning, and to the uh, food staff and everybody that made this morning successful. So thank you very much. I have two more things. Oh man! I want to. <laughs> I want to. I wanna, uh, please on uh, enrollment. Always a favorite topic. Um, the calls have slowed down. Right now, anyway. <laughs> um, There's still a lot of houses. There are. Yes, that's. Uh, yeah, that's. That's the scary part. Thank you. Um, there aren't any major changes since I presented this to you in July. I just. 
again, the, the area of concern was uh, and still is Joshua Eaton in kindergarten. Um, as you can see, we have 73. Remember, Eaton is um, an integrated kindergarten. Um, what we have done is for the morning sessions, there are three um, morning sessions. Uh, we have hired three um, part-time paraeducators. So there will now be three adults in the morning sessions for those rooms. When the half-day kindergarten students leave at 1130, um, the class sizes do drop um, you know, to acceptable levels. So um, that, that's the one area that we are concerned about K-2. Um, pretty much everything else is within the recommended um, 18 to 22 uh, range that you see there. But our, our class sizes are holding fairly steady from what you saw in July. Questions from the committee on the numbers? Thank you, Dr. Dorgan. Um And I do have one other. This is very positive. This is um, guidance department. Class of 2014 graduation um, with statistics in terms of where where students are going. Um, so this is this is the class that just graduated in June. Um, you can see that 88 percent of our students are going to four-year colleges, which is an amazing percent. Um, if you combine that with our two-year colleges, um, you can see that we have 94% of our students going to either a two- or four-year college. Um, again, that, and that, that's an increase from previous years. We've always been hovering in, in this area, but this is, this is higher than, than normal. So this is a very positive, um, positive sign. So I just wanted to share that with the, with the committee. Dr. Dory, do we keep uh, track of where each student is going? Is this yes? A okay. Yes, we do. I, I didn't know if it was a survey or no. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, no, no. We do um, at the end of the when the seniors make their final decisions, they do tell the guidance department where they're going. So okay. we do have that information. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely, Mr. Robinson. So, when did we get? When did you get this information? Is this recent? Or? I just got this. Why? I'm just curious. I'm mean, just only. I was just seems like we would have had more going into the armed services too. I thought we had more at graduation then. Um, hmm. so where are the other No, some are, some no. The, when I had made the, uh, the in my speech, some of them are going to um, a prep school that trains them for the armed services, but they're not going directly in to the armed services to start with. So either a, a Norwich or, yes. or they're entering a ROTC when, program. Correct. Or Annapolis. Or Annapolis. Yes, correct. But there were a few students still going directly. They, I would have thought those would have been captured in that other category maybe. You mean more than the two listed? This is yeah, right? I think okay. maybe we could just verify that. That's all, where those, those students ended up. I, yeah, yeah, I can I can certainly do that. I I just you know I just got this on Monday. It would be so. great to this continue great. to see that, that you know, the, to see that as trend data. Um, it, which which piece? This data. I oh, mean, to I'd see the whole. See, yeah, I'd love to just. Sure. I mean, and, and you comment the percentages. Um, excellent as, you know, eighty-eight um, percent. I don't actually know what, sort of the surrounding communities are. I know I, I know, a few other communities where I work. This is, almost twice that. But, um, stop, so. stop working there, Mr. Robinson. So. Uh, Linda, w Lina, Lina. sorry, yes. Linda Williams did that. Does that nice brochure? Does this information go into that? Yes, this will go into the new profile. Yes. Can, can we get a copy of that when that's done, or the, the new absolutely? One? Yeah, that was good. I like. That. To follow up on Mr. Robinson and Mrs. Uh, Webb's comments, it would be great. I, I don't know if the state requires this, or I don't know if other st uh, schools publish this, but it would be fantastic to kind of compare it to other and other like communities to see what their percentages are like. It, it would just be interesting because I agree. I think it's a really high number and something we should be proud of. It, it, it actually is data that the DESC captures and, and we usually include it in our budget book every year as well. So I think you can access it. I do have it some too. historical yeah. information and I can look yeah. at it. It can be accessed great. by public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, great. Dr. Wright. This is great. <sighs> uh, any further reports? Ms. Wilson, Seaberg, looking around, going this way. <laughs> Mrs. Engelson, nothing. Okay. Um,
Great. So uh, the three uh, main areas of business this evening are uh, the superintendent's evaluation, and then we have two second uh, readings of policy uh, updates. Uh, we'll start with the superintendent's evaluation. Uh, this is obviously something that we do every year. Um, this year, Mrs. Webb was kind enough to help coordinate that process. Uh, so this evening, I would like uh, Mrs. Webb to provide a, a summary of her findings um, and then lead to any discussion. Okay, I, do. I, had, I need one second. You can, you can have that one second. Oh, I had my papers here, and then I just somehow mixed and them all Go. Up. I'm not sure how I did Mrs. That. Snow Doctor. I just wanted to say while well, Mrs. Webb is um, pulling together her amazing work because this amazing. is a lot of work to do, to pull together all of, um, some of us are very long-winded by pen as well as by mouth. <laughs> and um, really? so that was quite a uh, job to pull together this evaluation. But I just wanted to say that it was very interesting being a newcomer going through this process with Dr. Darty and with the, the paperwork and all the observations, the surveys, um, we didn't have many observations except our participation. But it was very, um, I'm really glad that I got to go through it for the first time because it gives me insight into what the teachers also go through. And that it's a wonderful opportunity to learn in a collaborative way but it takes being constructive and keeping in mind that this is a learning process and not an assessment competitive put, put someone in their place. It's a way to learn. This is a tool. And it takes time. But I think that um, from my experience and my discussions with Dr. Doherty, I learned a lot. I hope he learned some from me. And I think. I hope we both grew through the process, and that's what I hope for the teacher evaluations while our educators are going through this process. I hope they find it as productive and informative as I did. Thank you for this opportunity. I will say that having to do it in public on an open meeting, I think, trumps anything, though. Yeah. <laughs> Glad it's not me. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. I'm ready now. Sorry, awesome. I unscrambled my papers here. Uh, so let me just say, uh, so that um, people understand, the process is something that is a very structured process. And um, Dr. Doherty, basically, um, prior as part of this process and prior to our evaluations, does really a self-evaluation, provides us with his uh, view of his performance against goals and his performance. He also provided us with <laughs> a uh, document that was a summary of um, some teacher, so 360 feedback, um, principal, not Principles. teacher, principal um, evaluations uh, on the same standard. So we had that information to look at, which I, I will say was very <coughs> beneficial to those of us who are newer to the committee and just didn't have as much visibility to John's um, performance throughout the whole year. So each member fills out this evaluation, and it's um, basically that it's a, a scale that goes from exceeds um, objectives, meets or significant progress, um, down to doesn't meet the standard. Um, and the way that the document is structured, it does require committee members to provide um, basically a justification or some comment on any individual rating that is um, above or below proficient, basically. So, uh, and committee members are welcome to um, provide information, you know, where, no matter what the rating is, if you, it was rated proficient. So, uh, basically, we had the um, six individual documents because uh, our, our previous Chair, Mr. Croft also, also provided uh, input. And those individual documents basically are um, put together into a school committee report. All the documents, the individual and the school committee, are public record. The Basically, taking the ratings is a numeric algorithm. And uh, then there's also really putting together um, representing some of the input. So the school committee document does not have all the text of everyone's individual uh, input or those comments, but I tried to take and bring some comments forward 
onto the school committee document that reflected sort of everyone's input uh, for the most part and um, you know wasn't too repetitive but tried to capture um, specific you know different things about mm -hmm. the rating so I just think uh, what I, I'd like to do is just sort of briefly go through that um, rating and just highlight a few a few things that I'll read um, but uh, basically, the overall rating um, ranges from unsatisfactory, needs improvement, proficient, and exemplary, and John was rated uh, proficient. Um, there was also, well, there was also a rating, uh, uh, this was an unofficial, but I want to highlight it anyway, um, rate um, evaluation on impact on student learning. And um, because it was unofficial, not all committee, committee members did provide input, but that ended up being um, very uh, high. Um, from low, moderate to high, and that was a high rating. And then in terms of the details that led to the overall proficient rating, there are four different standards, um, instructional leadership, management and operations, family and community engagement, and professional culture, and John was rated as proficient uh, on all of those. And in terms of um, a, a progress towards goals of uh, professional practice, that was met student learning significant pro progress and district improvement was significant progress so if I can just I'd like to briefly read a few things um, on uh, so for the overall evaluation Dr. Daugherty has provided strong leadership for the Reading Public Schools during a challenging period of great transition in public education in Massachusetts. Instead of merely trying to survive these massive changes, Dr. Daugherty has positioned Reading as an innovative leader in the implementation of new curriculum standards in math and literacy. He has embraced new educator evaluation systems and new student assessment tools as opportunities for growth. He's focused on increasing the use of technology in our classrooms, on the intellectual social and behavioral health of all students and on creating a professional culture where administrators are empowered and teachers are considered experts and leaders in their schools that was um, a comment that was part of the overall evaluation um, in terms of instructional leadership Dr. Darty has done a very good job in keeping teaching and learning on the right path towards excellence. He advocates strongly for keeping the district in line with the continually changing standards of instruction, assessment, and evaluation. He also does, does well in making decisions based on performance results. The district's instructional leadership is in a good place. With a view of 16 years in this district, as, and much, cha much change is evident since Superintendent Darty took the reins after, after excuse me, took the reins as assistant to superintendent of instruction and learning and ultimately superintendent. According to contact at MASC, which is our um, school committee association, he is very well respected and this is reinforced by the accolades of the U.S. Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, and Massachusetts Commissioner of Education, Mitchell Chester, who visited Reading as an exemplary school district on March 12, 2014. During the visit, teachers, administrators, and administrators spoke about prioritizing trust, learning together, being able to make mistakes, and the motivation for participating in state pilots to enable Robert Reading Public Schools feedback to help improve state-mandated programs. In the area of management and operations, Superintendent Daugherty's solid management of our district's facilities, budget, and employees is clearly one of his strengths. Our hiring process at the district level combines professional respect for the confiden confidentiality of all job applicants, inclusion of all stakeholders during the initial screening process, and public interviews of finalists. It should be a model for other districts. Dr. Daugherty puts a high value on professional development of his staff and encourages them to be leaders in education at the state level. His strong knowledge of education law, adherence to school committee policies, and professionalism promote a professional culture in our schools. Also in this area, Dr. Daugherty's leadership in the budget process provides our community with a process and document that's best in class. He uses budget limitations to create new opportunities for improvement and creative resource deployment. This is truly exempl exemplary given our per pupil is 2,500 below state average. While our student performance has remained high, our district is highly ranked on many measures, including the one Mrs. Doctor commented on this morning, uh, the, whoa, this evening, at the beginning of our meeting. <laughs> uh, safety has been a priority for superint the superintendent, and Alice has been successfully implemented, as have canine drug searches and the implementation of the Reading Public Schools chemical health policy. This has entailed coordination between town departments and the schools. Um, the superintendent has actually directed, oh, sorry, that's, sorry, too, too, um, too deep. That was good. Uh, 
Okay, the next measure is family and community engagement. Superintendent Doherty clear Superintendent Doherty's clear passion to address the alarming trend of social and emotional challenges faced by our students re requires him to form strong family and community partnerships. His involvement in community organizations like Rotary and Ricasa show his commitment to working with the community to address student success in a variety of ways. Hmm, let me just see. I think that was, I've got a couple of things. Some of them are repetitive. Let me move to professional culture. Dr. Darty is committed to a vision of excellence for the Reading Public Schools. He is passionate about continuous learning and professional growth for himself, all members of the district leadership team, and teaching staff. His efforts to find more time for teacher collaboration and his support for the development of teacher led initiatives to develop state mandated district measures reflect his belief in teachers being leaders in our school. He is an advocate for his staff and teachers giving opportunities for them to grow professionally and celebrating their achievements publicly. Dr. Darty is data and research driven, always looking for new pedag pedagogical approaches, continually improving and the district improving himself and the district and keeps our district at the forefront. One of those areas is including how he makes it a priority to teach the Expanding the Boundaries of Learning course and continues our leadership with the Blue Ribbon Conference. Our teachers are selected to present at national conferences and he maintains his own professional learning and networks to continuously improve our district. Mm -hmm. Oh, was that my time? Time's up. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Darty's commitment to teaching and learning has been demonstrated regularly as he physically is in place for multiple hours in the workday. His endurance is constantly evident, evidence in matters that impact student learning. He is in con constant communication with administrators and staff in this community in matters of teaching and learning. I know I, I, that was the English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I think that was all of the categories. So if anybody has any questions or wants me to go back and highlight anything, sure. I can. Are there do questions that. or comments? Any other comments? I'd like to give an example of um, how this process can work. There was one place in my evaluation of Dr. Darty where I actually gave him. Um, I think I said has made made progress. And he said, well, maybe you're being a little too generous with me because this, this, and this hasn't happened yet, and I really intended this to be. And so there was a lot of brainstorming go that went on in terms of what could be done and, and what has been done and where it hasn't gone to where he wanted it to go. And so that I just want to point out that there was not just um, – it didn't just reflect, oh, this is great, and this is where you are in a static way. It was the, he, Dr. Doherty's goals and where he wanted to get to. And the conversation was very candid and very honest in terms of ways to grow and ways to achieve the goals that he had established as well as along with the school improvement plans. So I just wanted to point that out. Actually, Thank Mr. You. Caruso. I just want to add that one part of the process, which Linda's sort of highlighting here, is that each individual, when they completed their review, really sat down and met with Dr. Darty personally, discussed the review and the rating, and had an opportunity to have a dialogue. And then um, subsequent to those meetings, the committee members forwarded me their finalized um, performance reviews. Um, so just that, that was definitely part of the process. Great. I also have just a technical thing on, um, I know these will go, they're open public documents, and the one that I filled out actually has my name on the top, but it doesn't have it on the intro page. It says school committee member fill in here, so I don't know if I missed that fill in the blank or not, but it probably should be filled in online. Hi, Mrs. Browski. Um, I would echo everything that everyone has said. I think it's an incredibly inclusive process. I particularly am appreciative of the 360 degree feedback. Our ability to see feedback on the superintendent from his principals, that was anonymous. I, I'd like the public to know that, that mm -hmm. they gave true feedback, which is very, very helpful to the school committee. And um, I, I know that 
we all together put hours of work into this, and, and Dr. Doherty certainly did as well. Um, with that, I would like to move to approve the superintendent's end of cycle summative evaluation report for the 2013 2014 school year. Is there a second? Okay. Further comments? Seeing no further comments, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Oh, nice. Six zero. It's nice to say six for a change. Uh, Mrs. Webb, thank you so much. Uh, I had done it in previous years. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's much appreciated. I look forward to Mrs. Browski taking care of it next year. Um, <laughs> Did he just say what I thought he said? <laughs> there you go. Uh, move on from there. I would just like to thank Mrs. Engelson for her support because um, without her, also the process is much uh, more difficult. So I appreciate it and um, her constant cheering me on, <laughs> <laughs> cooperating to help in any way possible. <laughs> And I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, moving forward, uh, at our last meeting, we had the first reading of two policy changes, policy JEC, the disciplinary due process, and policy ADDA, uh, which involves background checks. Uh, Dr. Darty, would you like to give a quick overview of the first policy JEC, please? Can I just make a brief comment about the last agenda? You know, I should have asked. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to echo, I, I believe, what Linda said, is I found the individual meetings extremely powerful. And, and we, we also tend to see that when uh, principals are meeting with teachers, when I'm meeting with principals, that those individual one-on-one -on -one meetings in this process is, is where you get the most um, feedback, the most bang for your buck in terms of ways that you can continue to improve and grow as an educator. And that, that really is what this process is all about, is you know, how can we continue to grow and improve um, in, our, in our roles as educators? So I appreciated the opportunity to sit down and talk to each of you. Um, and, you know, we had some very good conversations of things that are working and things that are not. And, um, you know, and those are things that I am going to be working on this year. So, again, I just wanted to say thank you on that. Um, thank you. In terms of uh, JEC, so I got some further guidance from our legal counsel because if you recall the last time when... I presented this to you. I felt that it was an extremely lengthy document yeah. um, that was going into detail that really is not policy. It's more guidelines. Um, so what you will see here is that this has been split into two pieces. The first piece on both policies, you see the actual policy, um, which, is, which is shorter and more general. And then it's, you see a section called the, uh, the R section, so the policy then dash R, and that's the regulation section. And that's more the guidelines and implementation piece of how, what this is going to look like. So um, that's what you see in front of you this evening. Um, what you would be voting on is the actual policy and not the regulations. Oh, okay, just the JEC. Yeah. Um, Good. So, yes. Thank you. Um, I may ask Mrs. Browski if she'll do that first reading. Um, if I'm looking at it correctly, then Dr. Doherty, it's just page one and two. Just it's page, just, yeah. yeah, it's just page one. Okay, so I'm going to. So I'll ask start it. with policy JEC. Please. Disciplinary due process. The Reading Public Schools shall develop administrative guidelines addressing the disciplinary due process rights of students. Such guidelines shall be published in the student handbooks of each school and are included in the JEC-P. All students are expected to meet reasonable expectations for their behavior while enrolled at Reading Public Schools. Each individual is responsible for their conduct in school, on school property, at all school-related activities or events on or off school property, or on school-provided transportation. Any failure to comply with the school's expectations for behavior will subject a student to possible disciplinary consequences, which can include, one, loss of privileges, two, teacher detention, three, office detention, four, Saturday detention with a footnote, which reads, please note that Saturday detention only applies to students attending Reading Memorial High School, Walter S. Parker Middle School, and Arthur W. Coolidge Middle School. Such a consequence is not applicable at the elementary school level. Number five, in-school suspension. Number six, out-of-school suspension. And number seven, expulsion. Disciplinary due process. A student has the right to be heard prior to any imposition of suspension. Prior to the imposition of suspension, a student will be given an opportunity to receive notice of and respond to the allegation or charges against them, except in cases of emergencies, which are addressed in JEC-P. 
opportunity to make academic progress, less than cons 10 consecutive days, any student who is serving in in-school suspension, short-term suspension, long-term suspension, or expulsion shall have the opportunity to earn credits as applicable, make up assignments, tests, papers, and other schoolwork as needed to make academic progress during the period of his or her removal from the classroom or school more than 10 consecutive days. Any student who is expelled or suspended from school for more than 10 consecutive days, whether in school or out of school, shall have an opportunity to receive education services and make academic progress toward meeting state and local requirements in accordance with the school's education service plan. In addition, any school district that suspends or expels a student under Mass General Laws, see Chapter 71, 37H, 1 half. I'm not sure how to read that, mm -hmm. shall continue to provide educational services to the student during the period of suspension or expulsion in a manner consistent with Mass General Laws Chapters 30, I'm sorry, 76. Section. Section, thank you, 21. If the student moves to another district during the period of suspension or expulsion, the new district of residence shall either admit the student to its schools or provide educational services to the student in an education service plan under Mass General Law, Chapter 76, Section 21. Thank you very much for reading that. Um, it, was, it was just long enough not to cut you off, so. I was, I was waiting for, for I was waiting for someone to come to your rescue as well. <laughs> but um, this is actually the second reading, mm -hmm. even though there's been some substantial kind of uh, moving around of the language. Right. Um, but we'll start with discussion. If there's questions or discussion on the policy, um, this is no doctor. Um, I actually have three. One okay. is just um, a suggestion on the title of this. Disciplinary is spelled. It's just missing, uh, there's a typo. It's missing a C. Um, and then I have a question. Um, it says that the school system is responsible for enabling the students to keep up with their academics. And I believe that there is a system in place in our schools already. And I was just wondering if the superintendent could say something about that I don't it's not the TSS but because when I was reading this I was thinking well how can that happen unless the schools are going to spring for a tutor but I believe there's a program already in place right so that the students can go I'm to not sure I'm not following you I'm sorry so where it says that um, any student who is expelled or suspended from school for more than 10 consecutive days shall have an opportunity to receive education services and make academic progress towards meeting state and local requirements in accordance with the school's education service plan. So I'm assuming that that is not hiring a special tutor for someone that's been it, put on. It could very well be. The, okay. the law, this is Chapter 222, the new law, which uh, took effect July 1st. So it very well could be. So we do not have staff in place that would be assigned to someone that was suspended in the school. Well, we, we could have staff in place. You may have to compensate them extra hours to be there, um, depending on the situation. But uh, you know, we are required to provide a menu of academic opportunities for students that are um, suspended for more than 10 consecutive days. That's the way the law is written. So it might. It could look yeah. like online. It could look like a Saturday experience. Um, it could be after school. Um, you know, so there's there's different options, and so we would need to provide options to the family to uh, make sure that the um, that they receive those educational services. Okay, I had one more question, but Certainly. I see some. Did you want to go first? I, I, can I do want to well, add a caveat a that. Hold on. What we're talking about here, we have very, very few students that are suspended for 10 consecutive days. Very few. So this is a law that was passed because there are a lot of school districts um, that they do have students that are suspended for 10 consecutive days more, and they were not providing educational services for those students. Um, we have always made sure that whether it's less than 10 or more than 10, um, that we have had options and opportunities for students. This, this law is codifying that. Mrs. Brodsky? Thank you. Uh, just a quick follow-up. Um, 
Ms. No Doctor's thoughts made me think of this. So this is a response to changes to state law, which codifies what we've already been doing. So that's a good Correct. thing. Um, but did the state set aside any funding that districts could access? Um, it's interesting. They did create a mechanism uh, using the circuit breaker formula, but I don't believe that any funding was allocated. Okay. Thank you. Right. Absolutely, Mr. Robbins. <laughs> I just subject to appropriation. The famous subject to appropriation. I just wanted to clarify. So you you use the term we have to provide options to families. I mean, a menu of options. I Correct. think you said. Why not say this is what it is? I because mean, that's what, what the that's options? what the law says. <laughs> yes. And they get to pick and choose what. But this is for the ten or more consecutive. No, cases. I know what it is, but uh, we the state's saying we have to offer either online or tutor or what I mean that's yeah it doesn't doing. the state doesn't specify what those options are we just have to provide a menu have we done that yet we spent we spent <coughs> a couple of meetings this summer with the administrators identifying what we would do if we had a situation like this um, so yes at some point you'll share that with us I think well it's essentially online it's Saturday opportunities um, you know, bringing the student in on a Saturday and tutoring them, mm -hmm. um, doing community service type activities um, in addition to the Saturday piece. So the, there are different things that we're offering. Mr. Robinson. Can, can you put this into perspective? That you, I mean, we, how many students have we had <laughs> suspended, say, in the, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've heard of any for 10 days or more. Uh. Um, in the last five years, yeah. we're talking maybe one or two. Is this no doctor? I did have another question. On the next page, um, the policy goes on to say if a student moves to another district during the period of suspension or expulsion, and again, I realize this hasn't happened, but this is a policy that we're voting on. So um, the new district of residence shall either admit the student to its schools or provide educational services to the student in an education service plan under this law. So. Um, my question about that, which comes actually from a conference that I attended a couple of years back, my question is about manda mandated reporting, which isn't in here. Um, so are we mandated to report to the new residents or the new school system what this student has done and what process has happened? And should we, that we had to report to the school the disciplinary record. Okay, that because record. what they said at this particular conference, which was at the State House a couple of years back, was that sometimes that got dropped and systems, um, systems right. got students without knowing there had right. been an issue, and that caused dangerous situations. But you are situations. required by law to do it. We are required by law. If a student is currently expelled from our school district, in a school context, us for the cumulative folder, we need to report the discipline. Now, sometimes we don't know if a student goes to another school district. They don't ask for their records, or no, well, no. The school district could ask for it, or the student could. But sometimes th they have the right to take the cumulative folder, and we, if they're leaving, but you know, so, so that's sometimes where the, the the you know the discrepancy occurs. But if a school district. If we know a student is going to another school district and has is currently expelled, then yes, we have to. Thank notify. you. Should that be in here? I'm sorry. That's that's. It doesn't say it specifically. It's in the well, law. It's in the law. It's part of the law. Okay. okay. Thank you. This is Browski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is just. Uh, I think we already covered this at our last meeting when we did the first reading. But just to clarify, we do not currently have Saturday detention in Reading. Is um, that we that? have had in the past. Okay. Uh, situations where students have come in on Saturday, yes, okay. to do community service or other other activities in lieu of um, some other consequence. And that's, would you say that's at, may I ask? Of that? course. Is that at the discretion of the administrator? So it's yes. not like there's detention every Saturday no. and you might get assigned to it. It's an, it's an um, if it makes sense for a given situation. Exactly. Okay. And, and now with this, the new Chapter 222, um, where suspensions are discouraged, um, unless, of course, you've got a real egregious type of um, disciplinary action. Mm -hmm. um, Saturdays may be a very viable option so that students aren't missing school. Because a whole another piece of this law that's extremely important is 
they don't want students out of school. So Saturdays could be an alternative to that. Thank you. I would say from past experience, too, it's a pretty strong deterrent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Mr. Robinson? I know we don't have it tonight, but I guess at some point I'd be interested to hear how we apply through the circuit breaker uh, when you have more detail on that. Okay. Um, it, well, it's, it's very similar to what you do with special education. The threshold is 38000 right now? $38,000. Okay. So we would have to have, for this, for one student, $38,000 in Cost. services um, that we would have, you know, provided educational services for so to get reimbursed. Basically, but, there's no reimbursement. Right. That's ridiculous. Right. Well, it's not appropriated right now anyway, so it wouldn't, yeah. That's uh, for some of the committee members, this is actually the first reading of this policy. Um, if, if committee members are comfortable, I'll ask for a motion to approve this policy. If committee members feel as though they'd like to wait, uh, Dr. Doherty, we're not under a particular deadline with this policy. Yeah, just just so you know, it, the law started July 1st, so we have to use this. We have to use okay, but the again, law if, either yeah. way. So I'm I'm fine with that, Brett. Yeah. I've okay. Been awesome. aware of it in the past, so. Mrs. Browski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to approve and accept the second reading of policy JEC disciplinary due par process. Is there a second? Second. Great. The, the one comment I have is for our student rep. Saturday detention. Um, I, I wasn't aware that there was Saturday detention. <laughs> That's good. It's <laughs> a good answer. I wasn't either, and I'm not aware of us using it at any time in the recent past. Well. Saturday detention. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would think it would. All right, we get a vote. One on one. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> easy. it's not going to be published. Are there any questions? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion carries 6 0. Um, the next policy is around background checks. Has this policy changed from our first reading, Dr. Doherty? Um, the there are two changes that have been made. The first change is very similar to the previous policy. I have separated the policy from the actual oh, um, the regulations. So you'll see that you have uh, policy ADDA and then you have ADDA-R, uh, which is the regulations. Um, so that's the first change. The second change is that um, I, there's been, there was some discussion, I believe, in the last meeting about volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we, we had we had a long conversation with the district leadership team about the best approach to this because we want to balance um, with volunteers. So what we're what we're using right now as a guide um, is any volunteer who has direct or unmonitored contact with students on overnight field trips or on an activity outside of the school day. Um, would be required after October 1st because there is a waiting time right now. Um, there aren't a lot of these kiosks that exist out there. Um, so we figure a month. Um, so anything that happens after October 1st, we would be um, moving forward with this. So that, would, that was the balance that we struck. We feel during the school day that very rarely is a volunteer going to have um, unmonitored. unmonitored and direct contact with students. Can you just repeat that, that, what you just said first about the volunteers? So it was um, overnight field trips yeah. and any outside of school, school outside day. the school day activity. So one, one example that's come up with some parents has been chaperoning backstage for a show. Because a lot of times parents are chaperoning backstage without any teacher back there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's an example of unsupervised direct contact with kids. Mm -hmm. OK or coaching one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on a Saturday with science team, which does happen, or the robotics team. Right. Those are things that do happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Mrs. Sprowski if she'd be so kind to read the polls. <laughs> be um, ADDA criminal background checks. As a part of its ongoing commitment to providing a safe and appropriate learning and work environment for its students and staff, Reading Public Schools will review and will review, excuse me, will review available criminal history information for all individuals who may have direct and unmonitored. Mr. Robinson? Uh, move to suspend further reading. Sure. Is there a second? Second. Great. All those in favor of dispensing further reading? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, discussion on this particular policy from the committee? Can I, um, 
Absolutely, Dr. Um, just for, for the community who's watching this, um, I actually had the opportunity to do this on Saturday um, as, as an employee. And you, you sign up ahead of time online. Um, you go to, there are several different locations. Uh, the closest one for a lot of us is Tewksbury. So we went, I went to the one in Tewksbury. It literally takes 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. They do a digital fingerprint of all of your fingers um, and you're done. And then the school department gets to accesses that online, uh, the the background check. So it's it's a very simple um, check that's done. Okay. Question or point of information? Yeah. So, if I'm not mistaken, there's a charge. There is for a charge. Fifty dollars. Is that what I? If you're a licensed educator, it's fifty five. If you're uh, not a licensed educator, it's thirty five. Okay, and. Um, that's consistent throughout the state, too. Correct. That's not Redding's policy. Correct. That's no, consistent. Yes, correct. It's interesting because I've con contracted with a, a school district in Maine, and it's interesting. I've, I've done this before, and, and it's pretty common. And um, like you said, it was, you know, same, same process, signed up online, went to a venue, had it done electronically, but there was no charge. So I'm, I'm curious. State of Maine must be covering that. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> another another state law that's not right. funded. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Exactly. Further questions on the reading, on so the policy, Mrs. Webb. Just uh, maybe just to again clarify. I know this came up in our first reading, the discussion about this, because people would, um, for the public and people who volunteer, may be saying, you know, I already do the Cory. You know, I've already been Coried. Why this? So maybe Dr. Darty, you could just say sure. you know, what. What law and what does this do differently from the quarry? So we will continue to do the quarry once every three years, and that's mm -hmm. that's all still part of the law. What the quarry does is it just gives you background check for Massachusetts only, whereas the fingerprinting does it for the entire country, and that's the difference. So if someone commits a crime in New Hampshire, um, it would not show up on a quarry, but it would show up on the on this on this. Uh, so wh while the asking our people who volunteer under the conditions that you just highlighted is, you know, an additional ask, and as um, Mr. Nyan points out, it's not covered by the state of Massachusetts in this case, I think we just all have to keep in mind that the, the ultimate goal here is to make sure that our students are safe and that um, to our, the very best of our ability, we're making sure that the adults that are in contact with our students are um, ones that we don't have any questions or, or we have no concerns about. So I think that's just important to make sure that people understand that we're not trying to penalize people for trying to reach out and support the school district. Right. This is the state law, and it's really in the best interest of the safety of the students. Thank you. Mr. Nunn? And did the state police conduct the... Uh, no, no, no. It's a vendor that the state hmm. has contracted out for this. Because in Maine, I know it was the state Morpho? police. Morpho? I think it was Morpho. I think that was the name of it. Hmm. Mrs. Brosky. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve and accept the second reading of revised policy ADDA -A -D -D -A background checks. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion on the policy? Seeing none. All those in favor of the policy? Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Thank you very much for reading that, Mrs. Brosky. Uh, the easy parts. We have two uh, field trips this evening, uh, both of which we've ha held in the past. Uh, the first is uh, Parker's trip to Nature's Classroom. Is there a motion? Move to approve the Parker Middle School 7th grade field trip to Nature's Classroom in October 2014. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? This is one that we've approved for... Yes, several, several years, years. Several years now. So, seeing no discussion, all those in favor. Oh, one question. Oh, absolutely. So, sure. it's an overnight. If I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Yes, it is an overnight. It's a uh, three. I think they have three nights. October 29th to the 31st. Mm. Dr. Doherty, as a reminder, the school committee approves all field trips that are out of state or yeah. and oh. or overnight. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. The doctor, Snow Doctor. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is in October, and we just discussed the new policy. So should we make sure that Parker has a heads up? They already know. That there. Thank you. Great point. Thank you. 
May I also say one more thing sure. in conjunction with this actually being applied? Um, I'm just wondering, I know that the schools have no money to help with this, and that's not my suggestion. I'm just wondering if, um, in terms of groups like you mentioned backstage, just to give the groups a heads up, it might be something that they can help their own volunteers with in terms of affording if someone can't afford to pay that, but they're going to be volunteering, that it might be something that could come from parent raised funds or something to help. Just creative funding. I'll just put that out there. She's out there. <laughs> Further discussion? Seeing none. All those one comment, one comment. Oh, certainly. So I'm going to uh, clarify up front that I've had <coughs> experience with uh, overnight trips and um, not necessarily, well, I've actually supervised them and I'm, I'm really, I have a lot of concern about it. And um, I'm going to, I'll state right now that I'm going to vote against it. It's not that I'm opposed to the educational experience. Um, I'm just adamantly opposed to overnight uh, overnight stays um, and I, I know there will be teachers supervising but um, I can you know testify to the fact that uh, there are a lot of people that are very uh, diligent about supervising and you know intend to do a great job and do a great job but things do happen and um, so I'm gonna be consistent and pretty much anytime something like this comes up I'm gonna vote against it Could for that you? reason certainly further comments Seeing none, we will take a vote on the uh, on the motion. All those in favor of approving the field trip to Nature's Classroom? All those opposed? The motion carries 5-1. Thank you. The next one is another Parker trip to Quebec in May of 2015. Mrs. Borowski. Mr. Chair, move to approve the Parker Middle School 8th grade field trip to Quebec in May 2015. Second. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Dr. Doherty, is this a trip that's also been happening for several years? Yes, it has. Okay, thank you. At both middle schools. Right. Is there a discussion from the committee? Again, this is an overnight stay. I just came back from Quebec. It's beautiful. <laughs> but I'm still going to vote against it. That's absolutely not a problem. Is there other discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of them. Did you have a question, Mr. Robinson? I don't. I'm voting. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's ready. Very quick. All I'm those in favor? <laughs> with it? <laughs> and in it? I was actually raising my, m my hand to make. Um, just sort of a counter um, that I think that students learn a lot by being overnight in a new place. It's a chance to experience a culture for something like this and that it's really important that the supervision is taken very seriously as I know our, our teachers do and our, and our um, volunteers do but that I love to support these trips, but I also love to hear that kids have remained safe and that supervision has been taken very seriously. Excellent. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion carries 5-1. Those Parker kids now want to go to uh, D.C. in May of 2015, <laughs> Dr. Doherty. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman. This is also a trip that Yes. Move to approve the Parker Middle School 8th grade field trip to Washington, D.C. in May 2015. Is there a second? Second. Um, and I, and I, I don't mean to joke. Uh, these are field trips that have happened for several years. Correct. And that's why we're moving quicker than we probably typically do. Uh, is there discussion, though, however? Ms. The doctor. Um, i just like to ask or maybe put it out there that that's two trips for 8th graders. And... I'd love to know that there's help for those who struggle to afford to go on trips. And I hope that it does not create a, a culture of haves and have nots sure. because it's, the economy can be very difficult on families. If I might, uh, Dr. Doherty, is this a case where the French class is heading to Quebec, or is the Quebec trip open to all students? And yeah, likewise, the, the French trip is only for the Quebec French trip students. Is for I mean, the Quebec trip is only for French students. It is not for the entire eighth grade. Right. I but think we'll right, but the DC is for everyone. Um, yes. Yeah, I believe it is. Yes. So your your point is still valid. Uh, you know. Further discussion. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, branch this, I hope, goes without saying, but I feel obligated to ask the question that there are two private security officers on duty all night on e every student floor. Presumably, this company and or the district does the appropriate background checks and fingerprinting. Yeah, it's the, it's the company that we contract out with. Yes. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion carries five to one. A final Parker field trip. Mr. Chair, move to approve the Parker Middle School Eco Club's Costa Rica field trip in February 2015. Is there a second? Yes, second. Thank you. Dr. Doherty, uh, this isn't one that we have recently talked about, or no. it is? It is? Yeah. Yes, okay. you have. Yep. We Great. This is done during uh, February vacation. Yeah, they actually had to postpone it last year because of the special. Right, remember they That's moved right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very much. You're absolutely right. Is there a discussion on this motion? Doctor. I just wanted to say that when I was writing school notes, this was one of the trips that I actually wrote about and interviewed some of the students and the teachers about. And um, it was really exciting to see the <coughs> follow through the training that the children went through leading up to the trip they earned this trip by studying and developing a baseline of education and information and then they apply it while they're there and then they actually create a book of their trip that they then share with families and i believe the student body when they come back so and this is um both learning and helping i believe i can't swear to that but um, I thought it was very exciting to see how the educational philosophy was applied through this whole trip from preparation to travel to return. And I just commend Parker on how they ran this trip. Mrs. Browski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm flipping through the materials and I'm not seeing the, the cost to the students for this trip. Is that in here and I'm just not seeing no. it? Yeah, I didn't see it. You've heard uh, that it was in the middle. In the middle. And the, the, the reason I'm asking the question is mm -hmm. to, to, to piggyback off of what Dr. Sir found out about the, the balance between wanting to afford our students these incredible opportunities. I heard a presentation by students on this very field trip. It was incredible. I would certainly want to I attend agree. something like this. I would want my student, my children to attend something like this. But we can't be blind to the fact that these field trips can be very, very expensive. And I think there is that balance to strike between having the opportunities there and creating a system where there are the kids who can and the kids who can't. So I just, just I'd, I'd be I interested. This just so you're aware, this is an after-school club okay. that meets all year long. So this is not the entire eighth grade population. Right. In fact, they start this in seventh grade. So this is a two-year, two -year it's really a two-year commitment. And I, I believe, I, I, don't, I know I heard this group present, um, I think here, and it couldn't have been that many years ago, but, um, and it was amazing what they did. And I believe they also worked, like many of the clubs do, they work together in various uh, ways to help raise money to defray some of the, tr uh, you know, costs of the, these trips, especially the sort of the week-long trips. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mrs. Webb. Uh, so, yeah, did we find the cost of this yet? Or no, I was kind of I, was actually I apologize for not paying attention. The cost of the French trip. To, to Quebec, I didn't see either, but um, I just want to add that I uh, I was just sort of writing down, I have um, three students who have graduated Reading High, and um, I think the trips, whether it's been Nature's Classroom or the Outdoor Classroom in Beverly, um, Wichita, Kansas, Bloomington, Indiana, Madison, Wisconsin, Washington, China, Spain, London, Peru, and Eastern Europe and hopefully, potentially, Morocco. Did I say London? Yeah, oh, and Spain. Sorry, I think I forgot. So amazing opportunities for them to learn, and I'm actually quite confident that uh, um, those experiences led to um, increasing, increasing probably some of the college acceptances because I know the essays um, that um, two of my sons <coughs> wrote were directly drew from those experiences. So um, it's always, there are risks every day in life. And so there's, there's always risks. I think the right kinds of things are done. Um, and we need to stay diligent that we continue to do those, those right things and take security measures. And we impress upon the chaperones and the teachers 
and the students their responsibilities. So. Further comments? Okay, seeing none, we're ready for a vote on the motion. All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries 5-1. Thank you very much. We have one contract to discuss this evening. Martha, I think you'll yes, probably yes, take the yes, honors. Yes. Yep. So um, we do have one contract to award. Um, our contract for masonry services um, came to an end in June. So as a result, we put it out to bid. Um, uh, this is one of the first ones that Kelly and I opened together is in a bid opening here. So we had a moment back in July <laughs> for um, five bidders. Um, the difference between the, the lowest uh, responsive and responsible bidder uh, MJS construction and the next one ERA was only $750 so um, it was quite competitive um, MJS construction uh, Kelly did check their references and they are the ones who recently awarded the contract here to do the the work outside that you're seeing outside of the high school so um, I would request that you approve MJS construction as, uh, as for the masonry services contract here at the Question. Hey, Mr. Robinson. So sure. who's the incumbent on the who It was done landscaping. That was the masonry. That was contract. prior, yes. And they didn't are they in there? They didn't bid the re No, they did not. Were there issues with their work? Is there a motion, Mrs. Yes. Broski? Oh. Move to authorize the superintendent to enter into contract with MJS Construction Incorporated for Masonry Services. Is there a second? Second. Um, only comment, uh, one of the bidders is Caruso in McGovern. I, I'm, not aware of, <laughs> I'm not aware of any relation there, so uh, I just thought I'd state that. I actually did a background check. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and and I, have, I have no problem approving this vendor. I do want to ask that question. The reason for the delay in the outside uh, of the high school, was that because of a vendor? confusion with this particular vendor or circumstances beyond their control? I think there was some, there was a confusion about what needed to be done. So okay. there was a little bit of confusion. It's not on the quality of their work. No, not okay. at all. Yeah, it's definitely not on Hasn't the Hasn't been on the timeliness or quality of their work. It's been on just a misunderstanding of what some of the work entailed. Yes. Is that a fair Process. assessment? Yes. Okay. Can I, I'm sorry, Mr. Robinson. I should have waited until we read the motion. What, why didn't Dunn submit or do we know? We did not renew with Dunn. So it was our decision? It was our decision, Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion carries 6-0. We are getting there. We have, we have a few, we have at least one donation. Mr. Chair, we have a very generous donation. Um, I move to accept the donation in, in the amount of $1,000 from the family of a longtime RMHS science teacher to be used to support the Reading Memorial High School science program. Is, there a, is there a second? Second. I'm, I'm assuming this very generous donor wants to remain anonymous. Mrs. Or. Yeah. It's not anonymous. It's from the family of David Grant. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Can we read yeah. the name then, please? I'm sorry. Yeah, we absolutely can. Um, this donation is from the family of Dave Garland. And let me read this. Please accept a donation in the amount of $1,000 from the family of David Garland. David passed away in 2014. This donation is to further science education at Reading Memorial High School. He spent many years teaching science and mm -hmm. coaching track. This is an incredibly generous donation. Was there a second? I yes. apologize. Thank you very much. And I think it's an, an amazing gift, and I'm yeah. glad to honor that family. Are there other comments or questions on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries 6 0. A few minutes. minutes. Mr. Chair, move to approve the open session minutes dated July 21st, 2014. Second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Mr. Chair, move to approve the joint session minutes dated July 30th, 2014. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Nye. Yes, absolutely. I Mrs. just want to. So, who. Linda, was the, were these minutes kept by Mrs. Engelson? No. 
Uh-huh. Um, there were, it was Paul, Paul Lachan? Uh, okay. No. Okay, oh, that's right, right, Sorry. Kate Masson. That's okay. We got a second from Mr. Nine. Is there discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Sorry, I was in favor. No, it's okay. That's great. Nope, just taking a, take a look. Six, <laughs> six zero. Thank you. Mrs. Brodsky. Mr. Chair, move to approve the financial forum minutes dated July 30th, 2014. Second. Second. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Is there discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Great. Um, okay. Um, we're going to go into executive session to the protect the litigation positions of the body, and we will return to public session. Mrs. We will. Borowski? We will. Yeah, Thank no. you. It's there's other. It's not just the litigation. Protect the litigation positions of the body. All right. Is it, I'm Bar- sorry. Collective bargaining with non-union. Collective bargaining and non-represented personnel. Right. Thank you. No, nope, I just need to read. Oh. Thank, thank you. you. No, Mr. thank you. Chair. Move to enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, non-represented personnel, personnel negotiations, collective bargaining, and the approval of minutes, and to return to open session at approximately. Dr. Doherty. To return to open session at approximately. Nine thirty. Nine thirty. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's a roll call, Mr. Robinson. Yes. Doctor. Yes. So Doctor. Mr. Nine. Yes. Mr. So yes. Mrs. Brosky. Yes. Mrs. Webb. Awesome. So we're adjourned. We'll be back by 9.30. Um, I already tapped. Thank you very much. I'd like to call the school committee back to public session. Mrs. Borowski? Mr. Chair, I move to approve the superintendent's salary of $173,400 for the 2014-2015 school year. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, ready for a vote. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion passes 5-1. Dr. Doherty. Um, I think it was evident when we talked about your review earlier in the evening what an outstanding job we think that you're doing for the Reading School District. Uh, we thank you. Uh, we look forward to working together over the next year. Thank you for thank everything. You. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Is there <laughs> second. Is it second with a yes. Excellent. All those in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Uh, next meeting is September 5th. Uh, Mr. Nine and myself eight, have eight. eight, eight, eight. <laughs> Mr. Nine and I and myself have office hours that evening. Mm-hmm. What time does that mean? Office hours start at 6.30. 6.30. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank oh you so much. Oh, thank you. I grabbed the two. Oh, right. You were set up to go.